Welcome back to another episode of my channel. We're today is a brand new day in our football jerseys, and we're it's here. Not a new day. I know. We're here to talk about the East now. In the last video, we talked about the West, about our ranking. Same thing. We're gonna do the same, starting 15 and one from his side and my side, and then we're going to go into a little depth of the East, and that's gonna probably be the whole video because we don't know a lot more about the East than we do the West. But nope. If y'all wanna. Have us uh, do another video mid-season or an in in-tournament thing. <clears throat> Let me know down below. And yeah, appreciate y'all for watching. Let's get to it. You want to go okay. first or you want me to? Uh, yeah, let me go first. So, Mo's going first. I think the East is a little easier to rank because most of the talent is in the top, top-heavy teams. So um, it won't be too hard as the West. Okay. So with that being said, I think a number 15, no-brainer in the Pistons. I... Besides Kate Cunningham and Jaden Ivey showing any improvement, I don't have a lot of high expectations on that team. Uh, Jalen Duran maybe, but second year or so. Number fourteen probably Hornets. It has to be the Hornets. They're just they're just so bad, man. And they all they got the the Bridges situation. I mean, yeah, you play in a year. Yeah, exactly. Uh, then at number thirteen. Now we got a little little more. Eh, okay, I think the Raptors. I don't think the Raptors are going to be any good this year. Oh, okay, okay. They lost Fred Van Vliet, who was one of their best scorers. Now, was he... The Rockets? Any... Yeah, was he efficient? No, but he was a scorer. So, Siakam came to everything, and I don't have a lot of faith in Scotty. So, 12 Wizards probably sounds about right. They did blow it up a bit, but they do have... Oh, wait, that's true. Wait, no. They only no, have they Kuzma up, left. But they gave up Beal. Yeah, so. they only have... Ooh, actually... No, so... As a little tweak... 14 Wizards. I still think the Pistons are worse. 14 Wizards, 13 Hornets, 12 Raptors. There you go. And then 11. Maybe the, it might be the Pacers, honestly. It really might be. They might go 10. Who knows? So 11, 10, the Bulls, Pacers, I would say. I think the Bulls will also be down there. 9, I will say... Um, wait, wait. I forgot the magic. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so, well, I do think the magic will actually have a very good year. So. I just zoomed in and just. Made You're it. right. I do think the magic will have a good year. So actually, scratch that a little bit. <laughs> so. I'm gonna do more in there. Number eleven, I say magic. Number eleven, I say magic. But they're gonna be fighting that spot more likely than not with the Bulls. So magic and Bulls fighting for that that eleven ten spot. Number nine, I say the Pacers. I think the Pacers. Tyrese Halliburton already showed what he can do. They uh, did add some good team depth, so yeah. Number number eight, uh, the Hawks sounds about right. Yeah, they yeah they get lucky. Um, the the Nets are worse than them, so eight could be Hawks or Nets. So seven, same thing. Hawks, Nets, not quite sure. Number six, I think although the Heat did lose a couple of valuable players, I don't think they're gonna be as bad as they were last year. That's just what I think. Tyler Hero might improve still a little bit. Number mm -hmm. six, I would say the Heat. Now, very consolidated top five. Number five, hot take. I say actually New York will stay at number five. I think Cleveland is going to go to number four. I think they're just going to have a better season. Probably Seven, Philly, whether they, whatever happens with the Harden situation, that's up in the air. But I still think they're top three in the East. It's just Embiid is, is, um, is crazy. You still have Maxi, um, Harris doing some stuff. So you're number three, Sixers. Number two, Celtics, and number one, I think the Bucks will do it. I think that Dane train is just too much. All right, that's Mo's top 15. We're going to go into depth a little bit when it comes to the Eastern Conference once I name my 15, and let's get started right on mine. No, it's my turn. I'm going to do a little bit different than Mo again, but not very much different. But I'm, I'm going to say Hornets number 15 straight up. I don't think they're that great. That's fair. Sorry. I know they got that one new rookie or whatever that guy's name is. And the Pistons for 14, because I don't think they're that bad, actually, with Caden, and Jaden Ivey, but... Uh, well, to be 14, pretty bad. <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> and 12, 13, more like, is going to be the Wizards, in my opinion. 12 will, will be the Magic. Sorry, Magic. I know you have you got some solid members on your team, but you're 12th. <laughs> yeah, wow. 11th will be the Bulls. I don't think they're that great. And then 10th will be the, the Pacers, because, as we said, Tyrese is... You can carry your team. Only for the Ninth will be will be probably the Raptors. I do agree with that. Then the eight, I think the Heat are going to deal with injuries, so I think the Heat will honestly be the eighth seed, but probably be a good eighth seed. Not saying they're going to be bad. Seventh will be the Hawks. They they got a decent team with Murray and Young. Yeah, just they just got to stay healthy. Average. 
True. Six will probably be the be the Nets because they, they believe it or not they have a pretty good squad. They have a good team, but it, it's not enough to be crap. It's not, top. but I do see them in the playoffs. That's for sure. Yeah. Fifth, I got the Cavs. So yeah, that's the Cavs. Fourth place. You guys want me to say and probably think I'm going to say what you think I'm going to say? Mm, I know what you're going to say. But I'm not. So that's with a P. Philly. That's who I'm going for. I'm glad you knew that. Yeah. Well, Fourth will be Philadelphia. I think they're a good team. But that's fair. One of them are just going to get messed up and they're going to have a rough season. I mean, that fourth the is not rough. situation is just crazy. I think coming in at a podium spot will be the Knicks. They'll be third. And then, uh, not very surprising, Celtics and, and the Bucks. Leading the uh, Eastern Conference, like the Nuggets and Suns for the West. Side note, it's kind of the same thing. I wouldn't be surprised if the Knicks go third either. It's just I think Philly will probably still have that spot. Makes sense. Yeah. All right, that's our top 15 still on the screen right now. There's mine. Okay, where, where, where's mine? Right over there. There's most. Uh, with our pictures of our faces again. And we're going to go into depth of the Eastern Conference. And, um,. Yeah, let's get to it. Greasy. Make sure to go back and pause and screenshot our list if you want to. All right, we're back after that short intermission. I said that right. Going to depth of the Eastern Conference now. Like I said, we're not super high on this. We're more onto the West. But anything straight up to talk about? Because I know the Harden situation's up in the air. That's a big one. Obviously, the Damian Lillard trade is huge. Those are just two of the options. You There's know? three big ones in the, uh, the addition of Pumps and Jesus. I don't know where y'all start. Uh, addition to the Bucks. I just. I mean, they kind of showed it in the first preseason game they played, but. I didn't see it. Yeah, they played like, amazing. Man. Bruh. It's that pick and roll. You can't, you can't give Dame room. And so the big also has to keep in mind because he could drive, but you also got to watch out for Giannis. Damian is, is a little bit of an injury-prone player, but to be honest, I don't really see him getting hurt that often. He is, yeah. It's the injuries that could maybe mess up their So that's why I'm trying to tell you that they, they are going to be a solid team. I think they're absolutely going to lead the West or the East. More like, I'm saying they're going to be favorites for my championship. Yeah, that's fair. The Celtics, though, the addition of Porzingis, again, has also proved to be actually very good, and they also got Drew Holiday. So not only do you replace Marcus Mark with a more uh, experienced, better playmaker, and arguably better defender in Drew Holiday. And, but you also add Porzingis, who's obviously a knockdown shooter. So he's a, kind of like your younger version of Al Horford, who can do a little bit more. Do so, they still have Horford? Yeah, but he's on the bench now. He's, he's going to get Celtics have a good team. Still got Derek White, who in my opinion is the top 100 player. One of the best, if not the best, backup guards in the league. Yeah, about Javon Carter? He's on the Bulls. Yeah, he's on the Bulls. Javon Carter. Yeah, he's good. What does that have to do with the, the I Bulls? I was joking. Oh. No. <laughs> I think the Pistons actually have one of the Thompson brothers. But again, their team's just not good enough. Do you think um, Harden is going to go? I definitely think he's going to leave. Where? I, I don't know. Uh, probably the Clippers, personally. It looks like that. I have a Harden jersey. Yeah. On the rocket. All right, you want to talk about We're going to talk about the little swip swap. Like, he has Cavs, Knicks. I have Knicks, Cavs. It's not very much different. The Cavs are just the Cavs. They have a good team, but they don't have that one amazing player. I mean, I know Don is <laughs> amazing. But, and never mind, I lied. They do have that one amazing player. The NBA. But besides him, it's like, yeah, they got Jared Allen. They just have higher upside than the Kings because they're a little younger. The Kings, I mean, besides Brunson, you already know what to expect. You know what you're going to get from Randall. You know what you're going to get from Barrett, huh? The Kings. Knicks. Did I say Kings? They have higher upside than the Kings because they're a little younger. The Kings, I mean... The Kings. Oh, sorry. Twice. Yeah. So you're gonna, you know what you're going to get from those two guys. Now, Brunson, yes, he could maybe give you a little more. You're not sure. But he's still very consistent. You know what your minimum would be the minimum for Brunson. With the Cavs, you can still make the argument that um, some players like Evan Mobley can make a, can make a somewhat of a jump. You know, being right there with Jared Allen. Jared Allen. Jared yeah. Allen. They're like the Timberwolves of the East in a way. That is very good uh, consumption or whatever they call it. Consumption? I don't know <laughs> Are what they call some... it. <laughs> Bruh. Good accept... I don't know what they're called. Observation. You know, I guess, yeah. That is true. Let's go more to the mid-teams now. Caught on most of that. Let's go with like the, the what we got? We got the Pacers at 9 or 10, that area. The mid-teams, like I said with the Hawks, I very much like them, but... You know, Young and Murray. Are they like your second team? 
No. That's yeah. a lot of money to go to those games. I wouldn't be surprised if I see a 41 and 41 from the Hawks, Raptors, Heat, or Bulls. That area, they're. I think they're going to be 7 through 10. I don't think there's going to be any differences. Unless I put it in the list, then there's going to be a difference. Not going to be very much difference. Like, how about the Nets? Like, those all teams, like, they haven't really changed much. There's not much to talk about. I would, I, the, do. I would say the Nets have the higher chance. The Nets is who I want to talk noise. about. Because, like I said, all those four teams that I just talked about, they're not much different. Bridges and Cam Johnson still... But then they still have Cam Thomas and they got Cam Thomas, they got Dwayne Woody, they got um Ben Thomas, they got Dwayne Woody, they got um Ben Simmons who might make him bounce back he based might on, actually do on something preseason this year. games. That is true. Yeah. Now I'm not saying he's gonna be an all star, heck no, but he can still maybe give you a solid like I don't know, seven. fourteen and eight. Fourteen and seven points. He could he can be he can be a, a, a real triple double uh machine because the Nets are gonna play him a lot of uh, power forward. Based yeah. on what we saw, they're, they're playing a lot of the forwards. I do, I do agree Rather with than that. Point guard. I see them being a top six, seven team. So I definitely agree with that. The Heat, man, literally, they just fell asleep. Fell asleep on Dame. They fell asleep on on Beal. On that both. is true. They, they fell asleep on shapes. both of them. Yeah, rumored to go for hard for Drew Holiday. No, Drew no, Holiday. for Drew Holiday, which they also slept. So. <laughs> <laughs> what are they doing? Are they just waiting to rebuild that? I'm so and just so you guys know, because this video is most likely not going to come out for at least another week because it's going to take a while to edit. This is the East I'm talking about. It was filmed on this date right here, which is the, what, 21st? I think it's the 21st. This was before the NBA season. So just to mention, we're going to end this little snippet and get to the next part. All right, we're back. What did I say? All right, we're back. We talked about the East. Talk about standings, uh, trade. So it's like we, uh, we put yeah. our intake on it. I think the ranking is more important than anything right now. Sure, the depth is also important, but rankings is something to look back on. And uh, yeah, whoever's yeah. closer, you know, we'll be pretty happy about. You get if you're right on the dodge, you get three points. If you're within one position, you get a point. Let's see at the end of the season who's the closest. Are you money involved? No. Thank Not you. this time. All right, we're going to end off this video. I do appreciate you for watching the Eastern Conference uh, predictions from me and Mo. Is there anything else you want to add before we end this video? Um, no. Okay. Well, yeah. So Expecting something else. And the, yeah. So like I said, we got the Bucks and the and the Celtics leading the West. Wait, wait, there is something. Oh, wait, I forgot. Oh, my God. It's like some talk, <laughs> though, talk show days, bro. Let us know what your intake is. Leave a like and uh, yeah, that's about it. Thanks for watching and um, Anthony Edwards MVP. Anthony Edwards, Edwards top MVP. Top five votes. Top five votes. Thirty points a game. Twenty. Let him know. Points a game. Let him hear it. Let's do it. Welcome back to another to my channel. This is going to be posted most likely before either video comes out, but this is a pretty high wanted video on my channel. A lot of people commented that and whatnot. And we did it last year. So what we did in the first video, which is going to be all Western Conference, is we ranked our teams 15 to 1, both of us. And then we went into depth of the trades and anything that could be considered cool in the West. And that was the whole West video, and we ended it. The East is about the same thing. We went for 15 to 1, both of us, and we talked about depth in the East and major trades like the Dame trade or, or the, how the Celtics look and Knicks and Cavs are you know, about the same same type so that's what we talked about on that and that's really about it the endings on both videos and yeah we ended it off with that so i do hope you guys both enjoy you guys both i mean you guys enjoy both videos <laughs> two viewers <laughs> <laughs> you guys enjoy both videos leave a comment down which one you liked better which one was more informative and uh yeah thanks for watching and what you got this time man you asked me too much i know you're not gonna say sayonara so what you got this time um so you know Yay! Also, before we end the video, do not ask why we're wearing football jerseys again. Please ask why we're wearing football jerseys. All right, sign our. I've been looking at that for a minute. What is that? It's a, it's a, it's an Xbox controller charging thing. Cause...